Welcome to Capital View, the weekly program on state politics and government and how it might just affect you. Joining me this week on Capital Week, Capital View, is Dave Dahl, State House Bureau Chief for WTX Radio. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for having me. You're looking good. Also, Peter Hancock, reporter with Capital News Illinois. Welcome, Peter. Hi, Bruce. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Uh, the big news this week, uh, well, there's lots of big news, uh, uh, a lot of it in, in Washington, D.C., perhaps, but we'll maybe circle back to that locally, or at least at the state. It's Michael Madigan uh, and the investigative committee convened by the House. Dave, you were there uh, for the first substantive hearing. Uh, I'm not That's sure how yeah. substantive it was, but it lasted a long time. Can you give us a, a Cliff Notes version or a more expanded version of what you saw and what you thought? Well, maybe working backwards, uh, we know that this committee is of six people, uh, three Republicans and three Democrats, and I think it's pretty clear that any vote on anything uh, is going to be 3-3 three, three, and that nothing's going to happen with this in terms of uh, whatever punishment they could levy on Tom Ed for their bribery and also determining the only thing they could determine against House Speaker Mike Madigan, whether uh, he is guilty of conduct on becoming a lawmaker, which could lead to him uh, being expelled uh, from uh, the Speaker's chair, expelled from the House. Those things are highly unlikely because, uh, as we said, it's going to be 3-3. Democrats on the committee are loyal to Madigan. and. Um, you know, as I said, highly unlikely. Now, the bulk of the uh, time on Tuesday was taken up with a uh, ComEd executive vice president, someone who's only worked for them for a few <laughs> months, executive vice president for compliance, ironically enough, because a lot of this is about ComEd not complying and laundering money and trying to do things for Madigan, do things to impress Madigan. It's all laid out in the uh, deferred prosecution agreement. The problem with this is very little of it and very little of uh, this gentleman's testimony can even be connected uh, to Madigan. And uh, that's one reason why, you know, anyone who's tried to get anything on him uh, has failed. He doesn't use email. He doesn't use cell phones. Uh, and one saying, at least someone in Madigan's circle has said, uh, that which can be understood does not have to be spoken. And here you've got this blabbermouth, Mike McLean, uh, telling everybody how influential uh, he is with Madigan and how he, McLean, is the one to see if you need a favor, blah, blah, blah. And with friends like that, you know, it recalls what Joe Biden said, will you shut up, man? <laughs> so that's where we are. Well, I'm not sure how much of a blabbermouth is Mr. McLean. Did he testify? Will he testify? No. Of no, course he not. He chose not to. He declined he the invitation. And, and yeah. they're not doing subpoenas either. Well, you know, subpoenas may not, you know, subpoenas you need, uh, uh, It's a, as I understand this process, it's up to the chairperson. In this yeah. case, Chris, Chris Welch to yeah. issue subpoenas. Uh, yeah, how how close is Chris Welch with uh, the speaker? Barely. Barely? Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, before this happened, I believe it was a couple, three days before the the the, the hearing convened, we got what I kind of perceived, rightly or wrongly, as a Fifth Amendment light, L-I-T-E, uh, statement from Madigan. Uh, I'm not going to appear, but here is what I would like to say, but I'm, don't put me under oath. Uh, yeah, he took two and a half pages to say what everyone else did in two sentences. Yeah, well, that, that's a, that, that, that might be fair enough. Uh, but the committee hasn't adjourned. I mean, it's, it's still, it still exists. There still is... Our, our, our further hearings, uh, there's been apparently some, some folks have gone back, not gone back on Mr. Madigan, but some members of his own party in the General Assembly have said, uh, no mas enough, and they've, they've rebelled. Uh, and we have also had Governor J.B. Pritzker this week saying pretty much strongly, Mr. Madigan, you should sit down and answer these questions. Uh, does that move the meter at all? No, we're not going to hear from the speaker in this. We're not going to see a subpoena. We're not going to see people who uh, would testify adverse to Madigan. Um, you know, as we're uh, recording this program, Stephanie Kipowit, who is a House Democrat from Oswego, is formally announcing that she wants to be speaker. So that is a direct challenge to Madigan. 
uh, they're not going to bring Stephanie Kefowit up to the witness stand. Uh, the chair of the committee, Chris Welch, has to approve all subpoenas, and he's not going to do it. The other Democrats aren't going to go for it. So it's going to be this 3-3 standoff, and, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be how it ends. Oh, well, you know, and that's the common prevailing wisdom. I think you're, you're, you're probably right. Uh, probably. However, uh, the representative who is, I mean, she, she, she's a woman, uh, and I don't know how much gender might matter here, but a lot of why Madigan is where he's at now is because of the Me Too movement, uh, uh, if we trace this all back, and, 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 and how this investigation got started to begin with. Uh, we're just doomed to, to, to the same thing over and over, that, that, that we can't move forward in terms of having a representative of either party, because let's be fair here. Um, Mr. Welch, Representative Welch, has said he looks forward to having uh, uh, Representative Durkin, the Republican leader, testify under oath. What are we to make of that? I mean, I, does I anybody really, really want to hear from Durkin under oath? What do you mean by doomed? Doomed? Well, yeah, you said we're doomed. Well, because what you're saying, Dave, is that there's no way that we can get past where we're at now. That the 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 the, the, the metro. Uh, I mean, th this isn't the first time that the speaker has been accused of, of doing things that that, that 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 aren't perhaps what we would, you know, folks would conceive as, as, as ethical. This time, though, you do have the governor saying, at least of his own party, saying, you know what, you should sit down and answer questions. And well, what does what... To answer your question, Bruce, uh, you know, throwing it back on Durkin, I don't know if they're just saying, yeah, yeah, not in so many words, but they're putting Durkin on notice that his fingerprints are on some stuff. If Mike Madigan is going to be in trouble for recommending people to be employed, maybe Durkin who also recommended people be employed, should be under some scrutiny. If uh, Madigan is being accused of doing ComEd's bidding, well, uh, there was a news release when, um, I think this was a big news conference they had up in Clinton a few years ago for the, um, uh, I forget what the F stands for. No, not that. The, the <laughs> future, future, future Energy Jobs Act. Yeah. Pardon? Future Energy Jobs Act. Well, uh, Leader Durkin, you were awfully interested in getting that passed. Uh, you said you had to move mountains, huh? Maybe uh, you're in the bag for ComEd too. See? Well, so, okay, uh, but let's let's put it this way. You know, just want to embarrass each other. They, 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 there's a sausage factory at play here in, 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 in Illinois and in, in 49 other states. That's how legislation gets made. It's not necessarily pretty, and, and, and Illinois is, is no different. The ComEd folks, uh, I believe, were asked some words to the effect, uh, did you ever give anything to, to, to Dirk and everybody from the GOP with, ex with any expectation of anything in return? They said no. Uh, but we are paying $200 million dollars. Uh, to settle this thing where we we're accused of bribing folks close to Madigan. To which uh, we went to court and pleaded not guilty. Well, you can plead, you can plead a lot of things in court. $200 million is $200 million bucks. Saying. Yeah, uh, that money talks loudly. That, 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 that's money that talks. And what it's saying is guilty. He's guilty, sure. But, you know, I, I'm still interested in the governor's role here. Because the governor seems to be inching. I mean, that he would even say, you know what, uh, Speaker... You do owe an explanation. You do owe, owe some answer, sort of an explanation. I mean, how 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 precedent setting might this be? And it will make a wits bit of difference. Peter, what do you think? Well, I think the governor is trying to play the role of the moral leader, uh, but the fact of the matter is he doesn't have that much leverage. He runs the executive branch. Michael He's Madden. only the governor. Go ahead. Yeah. Don, yeah, Michael Madigan and Don Harmon run the legislative branch. Uh, and so it's very dangerous for a governor to get too involved in uh, things that are strictly legislative issues, such as who is going to be the Speaker of the House, okay. who's going to be President of the Senate. Uh, it's If the governor starts dipping his toe into that water, uh, people start getting resentful very quickly. So Yeah, if the uh, governor thinks he's in charge of something. Yeah, it's fine for the governor to stand out there and say, Mr. Madigan, uh, you need to answer questions. Yeah, I can ask Browner about that. Yeah, there's uh, not much you can do about it. Sure, but I mean, in some ways, it just cements, in, it, you know, um, even more the idea that, that Michael Madigan runs state government in Illinois, and, and he's, he's, he's unassailable, unapproachable, 
and, and he calls the shots. He's the man behind the curtain, and 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 even a governor can't get him out from behind that curtain to sit down and answer questions. And rightfully so. I mean, let's let's be let's be candid here. Um, nobody who is under there's a pending federal investigation. Madigan would be, you know, foolish to sit down and answer questions under oath that could come back and haunt him later. Uh, yeah, you don't still, pay a lawyer for that kind of advice. In right. Well, you got, yeah, this is free here on Capitol View. Anytime you want it, just, you know, if you're under federal investigation, don't testify. Um, and the, that's same thing, that, yeah. the, Go ahead, same, the same thing can be said for all of the other people that the Republicans want to call as witnesses. Many of those people are targets of the investigation themselves. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yes, the committee can issue subpoenas, but you can't force somebody uh, to incriminate themselves in sworn testimony. Uh, those people are still protected by Fifth Amendment rights. Mm. Uh, and so I think it's very unlikely that any of those people are going to testify in this forum and say things that could put them in criminal jeopardy in another forum. Yeah. It's very interesting, I think, how we even got to this point to begin with, because these are rules of the House that got us to the point where we're at, where uh, these hearings can be uh, uh, convened, and whether they act, folks actually testify, sometimes silence speaks volumes. Uh, how did the Democrats get here? I mean, was there a way? It, I, I mean, I, it, it, was this something that, that that could they could have headed off at the pass, or did they just get blindsided and say, "Oh, wait a minute, uh, uh, we can use the same procedures that were used in prior occasions"? I think maybe against Luis Arroyo and uh, uh, another legislator who would. Remind me, Dave. You've got you've got the history on this. The, well, there are a few in the Senate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you're talking about Derek Smith. The exact Thanks. procedure was yeah. used for Derek Smith, who took seven thousand dollars and, uh, you know, exposed as a rank amateur at this game. Seven thousand dollars. Hmm. Yeah. It's the same process, though, that uh, they used to kick Derek Smith out. That the uh, uh, folks are uh, examining uh, ComEd and its deferred prosecution agreement. And Madigan, uh, Madigan, by the way, is um, uh, not charged, we're reminded. Sure, absolutely. But it's coming at just the right time. I and mean, if, if you want to, if you were running a, a political operation, and these folks are, um, it, uh, that's, that, and there's nothing wrong with that, this is exactly the right time to pull this trigger. Uh, and, and, and there was nothing that the Democrats apparently were able to do. Uh, did they foresee this? Was this something? Because it had been portrayed as a shocking, rarely used sort of, well, how rarely was it used, given that it was been used at least twice uh, in the last 10 years? Yeah, uh, only twice. Only twice. That's all they have to go on. Yeah. Well, and let's, let's move on, about. because, you know, Madigan and, and, and ComEd and, and, and these hearings aren't the only thing going on in Illinois. There's always this um, COVID situation, which uh, is here, true here and everywhere around the nation. Now we hear that uh, Governor Pritzker uh, is in quarantine because a member of his staff has tested positive. Uh, the governor, we've heard just most recently, uh, uh, has tested negative. Uh, 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 is this even news anymore when a governor tests positive for, for COVID? Because it, it certainly wasn't a banner headline. Well, well it, was, it was a big headline in Missouri when Missouri's governor and his wife tested positive. Uh, in part because uh, Governor Parsons in Missouri was one of those governors who has refused to issue sure. a state mask mandate. Right. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people uh, in Missouri were, you know, saw that as a sign of just how serious this is. Right. Uh, in Illinois, the, the governor has not testif tested positive, as I understand it. It's just Correct. a member of his staff has, and it's a member of a, a staff member that the governor has been in close contact with, although they say that they were always wearing masks uh, at the time. So, I mean, I, it, to me, it just shows how widespread this thing is and how we are not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination yet. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, this virus is still out there and it can get anybody. Yeah. And, and, and I, the, 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 I mean, you're right, Governor Parsons had taken a much different approach to this and there's some element perhaps of Neener, I told you so, and that can't, that that's undercut somewhat here in that in that Pritzker has been widely criticized and still remains under criticism as 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 being too strict. Uh, most recently, 
by uh, the uh, uh, bishop here in Springfield, Illinois, uh, Thomas Paparaki, saying we've gone too far. Uh, interesting comment, I thought, for uh, uh, the bishop to make. Uh, he's the bishop is 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 been politically active in the past and talking about things that that he felt important. Uh, will such will such statements uh, uh, convince the governor? To perhaps take a second thought, let's play football again. Or is 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 that out of the is that horse left the barn? Are we going to play football this this fall? Or is 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 his testing positive, and 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 other events? Um, no, I, I don't think anything is going to change. I mean, the governor and Dr. Ezike have both said they're listening to scientists. They're listening to public health experts. They're following that advice. Uh, the cardinal can say whatever he wants. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not who the governor's, you know, that's not how he's making decisions. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there, 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 there has been uh, 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 the trend here in Illinois. We've done on the scape fairly well uh, uh, compared to, 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 to other states. Uh, does that, uh, uh, and folks are saying now, I've seen, I saw a poll this morning where folks tend to say, uh, not just Illinois, but I like the way my governor has handled um, the COVID and the coronavirus situation. I'm not so happy about it on the federal level. Uh, does Is our governor standing out ahead of any other governor in terms of how he's responded to this? What do you think, Dave? Well, I think a lot of people are still unhappy and I, I think we might find out later whether it represents all of Illinois or if it's a very, very vocal minority and mm -hmm. You know, some people don't really believe that COVID's uh, for real. Uh, I get a sense that we're not diminishing COVID. Uh, we're not near a vaccine. We're just bored. We're tired <laughs> of being unemployed. We're tired of not going out to eat. We're tired of not opening our business. We're tired of not spending money. We're tired of not making money. And we're tired of not playing high school football. Sure. I think... Oh. Uh, I don't think it's anything medical. I think it's uh, we're we're just tired of it, yeah, no. and, and so th that would assume that COVID that there's really something to COVID, and that it's not a hoax. Uh, mm -hmm. Now you can say, well, it it kills so few people that uh, you know we can't inconvenience ourselves for this small number of deaths, and uh, I'm sure the uh, the governor would have something to say about that. As I'm certainly, yeah. no, okay, I think it's hard to. It's kind of hard to make the argument that 200,000 people dying in the course of six months is a small number. It's not Out a small Out of 300 number. million people? Besides, and look how old some of those also, people are. There is also some evidence that that 200,000 number is a lowball estimate. Uh, the National Geographic Society has been measuring what it calls excess deaths over this period. Uh, the number of deaths over and above what you would expect uh, in a normal year, uh, they're saying it's maybe closer to 300,000. Uh, the United States lost 400,000 soldiers in World War II. So this is a serious thing. Uh, and I don't know how you can simply say 200, 300,000 American deaths is not enough to worry about. Well, number one, people are saying that. And number two, according to People who post on our Facebook page every time we do a story about the COVID numbers. Uh, let's say you die in a car crash. Well, that that goes as a COVID death. Uh, let's say you die of a heart attack. Well, that goes as oh, a COVID that's death. Not true. That's and not they're true. making up the numbers. I'm just saying that. Uh, well, hold on. I don't want to be you're, Chris you're Walls. You're going to run into that argument. <laughs> I don't want to be. Well, I don't want to be Chris Walls here. Whatever. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll say this. I don't do Facebook. And so I'm not sure how much I, I, I mean, Facebook uh, 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 is, is a measure of, of, of what's right or what's wrong or, or, or objective truth. But I mean, the point of it remains that the COVID is a political issue uh, on both a state and a federal level. And people get worked up about it because there's li it's life, death, taxes, well, not taxes so much, but everything else that's important. You know, money, uh, for example, is, is important. And uh, you know, it, it, that, that's what, uh, at least on a, on a national level, what Biden uh, is, 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 is touting is, or, or is saying that you can't fix the economy 
until you fix COVID. Uh, well, and, go ahead. Here's another thing that's important. Now, the Big Ten caved, and uh, so we're playing college football, and let's say you're a you know, big, strong football player is COVID positive. Now, he might turn out okay, but what about when he goes home to mom and grandma? Sure. You know, then I, I, I think that's what they're uh, worried about in football. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a totally charged up thing. Mm -hmm. And there are naysayers and non-believers out there and uh, hoaxers. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, uh, uh, Peter or Bruce, but, uh, you know, that's just how it is. It is not unanimous that, uh, you know, it's really a thing. I think we've seen all kinds of gatherings where there's no social distancing and no masks. Sure. Right. Well, speaking of masks, let's move on to Halloween. It's it's here. The State Department of Public Health has issued uh, here's the guidances for how we should, you know, we're in a no hayride zone. Lordy. Um, and so will I be able to take a hayride uh, uh, and, and, and look at the at the harvest moon uh, uh, as an American sort of, uh, of, of phenomenon as we can possibly imagine? Uh, that's what the Department of Public Health is saying. Uh, but we, we're not able to do stuff like that anymore. And, and, and how much can government continue to say no hay rides in hayride country? Um, we'll see. Um, you know, again, on matters of money, and again, to, 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 we've got just a few minutes uh, remaining, I'd like to touch briefly on uh, statement, statements that have come up recently about the graduated income tax and uh, particularly by the Lieutenant Governor Stratton. Uh, well, if this doesn't pass, your taxes are going to go up 20%. Uh, good tactic, bad tactic. Uh, what do you think, Peter? Well, uh, yeah, there's a lot of misinformation going on. Uh, going on. Uh, the people who are against the tax are saying, you know, this gives the General Assembly, Assembly authority to raise taxes on anybody at any time. Correct. Uh, they have that authority. That, but now. that's all. Let's be clear. The General Assembly has that authority and always has. They're the yeah. legislators, but go ahead. Uh, I mean, raising taxes, whether you do it across the board or whether you do it on targeted groups. Oh, right. Okay. Raising taxes, any legislator will tell you that's the toughest vote they ever have to take. And uh, so, you know, it just depends on, you know, where you sit, depends on where you stand. Um, you know, if, uh, if you're one of those people who says it takes more money to run this state government than the state has, and we need additional revenue, sure. uh, this is an effective way to do it. Uh, if you're somebody who says we don't have a revenue problem, we have a spending problem, then you're probably going to vote no on this and just yeah. tell the state government to live within its means. But do you get over the finish line? Do you get to where you want to be by saying, um, and and in and fair in fair point, this is not the twenty percent income tax hike uh, that that Stratton has referenced recently, at least potentially had been raised before. But does that get you over the finish line to say, if you don't do this, we're, we'll give you what's behind door number two? Well, and I think Governor Pritzker clarified that a day or two later when he said, you know, the math of state government is not all that complicated. Uh, you've got X amount of revenue and you've got Y amount of spending. Uh, they're not meeting up. So you either raise taxes or you cut spending, which means cutting education, cutting health care, cutting all these services that people like, uh, or uh, you can go this third route, as the governor calls it, uh, the middle path, which is you change the Constitution so you raise taxes on people who are most able to afford it. Okay. Well, quoting, quoting Joe Biden, here's the deal. One argument against the graduated tax is that it gives the legislature more power. Well, no, it really doesn't. The legislature can do whatever it wants to taxes at any time, even today. All they've got to do is get together and do it. No, that's absolutely true. And, yeah. you know, we're running out of time, so let's circle back quickly if we can. Uh, I'm glad you brought up Joe Biden. Uh, we have had a, a heck of a presidential debate this past week. More to come. We're under a minute. How does that affect, and I want to talk about specifically, at least for folks who are viewing here in central Illinois, uh, the uh, Londrigan uh, Rodney Davis uh, uh, race. Rodney Davis has been a stern, uh, a rock solid supporter of Trump. Peter, uh, if you're Rodney Davis after this debate, what do you do? What do you say? 
change the subject. I mean, that debate was really a low point in the history of American government. Uh, get away from it. Uh, change the subject onto something else. That's okay, and Dave, all. you know, and Dave, if you're if you're Betsy Londrigan, because I'm not sure folks thought that that Joe Biden hit it out of the park either. If you're Betsy Londrigan, what do you say? College kids, turn out to vote. <laughs> she said that last time, and we're back where we were before. And so it's going to be very, it's going to be interesting to see how this, this plays out. Uh, and at this point, we are, in fact, out of time. And so thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Capital View.